Welcome. Today we're going to be talking about the most advanced treatment options for meniscus tears to optimize joint preservation. We have with us in the studio Dr. Patrick Smith from Columbia, Missouri, and Dr. Michael Stewart from Rochester, Minnesota. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks, Chris. So, Pat, I've noticed a recent increase in the number of journal articles discussing meniscus repairs and the associated benefits of repair versus resection. Why do you think there's been such a renewed interest for repairing the meniscus? Well, Chris, you know, we have a lot of old literature which showed us the, the positive effects the meniscus has for joint function. The old pressure film studies that showed if you did a meniscectomy, you had a 235 percent increase in the contract stresses, even with partial meniscectomy at 65 percent. But more recently, I think what we've looked at is the radial tears and the root tears and how they adversely affect meniscal function as well. And I think the combination of, of that research and the technology that has developed to make meniscal repair more feasible has probably led much more to the research increase we've seen published. Some interesting points. Mike, has this new research influenced your approach to meniscus repairs? Definitely. Uh, my menisc meniscus repairs are increasing and also the literature would say so. Abrams published a series showing that meniscus repairs doubled between 2005 and 2011. And I think as Pat mentioned, we know the consequences of meniscectomy, deterioration of articular cartilage and excessive forces on our ACL grafts. And a recent study by Stedman, looking at his series of patients, both older and younger than age 40, showed that there was no difference in the failure rates between those two groups. And those with a meniscus repair actually had higher function and satisfaction. So I think that the new technology and techniques expanding indications is making this a much more common operation. I think, Mike, one thing about that Stedman study was interesting. Although their retail rate, and it was up to 16 years, was 5% for both groups, they came back and reviewed the operative reports and they said that even though patients had additional partial meniscectomy work on the repairs, that the, rep that the new tears were in a different location, implying that some of the meniscus does heal if it's been repaired and even if you re-tear it. So it kind of behooves us to try to repair as much as we can because even if it does fail, you end up still probably having more meniscus if you sutured it the first time around. I think that's a great point. And just take a full thickness radial tear, for example, even if we can get peripheral healing, and we had to go back and resect part of the meniscus, we ended up taking out a lot less than we would have with the index surgery, and maybe we restored the hoop stress resistance by getting that peripheral healing. I think the other thing in that regard is some, the biomechanical studies have been interesting to me on the radial tears because they typically do their study, they made a 30% tear, a 60% tear, then a 90% tear, but in the, in the lab at least, it's the 90% radial tear that adversely affects the hoop fibers. So you're right, if we fix a radial and at least get that outer 30% to heal and now it's a 60%er, at least from the lab study, that we've preserved that joint a lot more. Pat, has this paradigm shift influenced the way you repair the meniscus, including root tears? For me, it's been the knee scorpions made a huge difference in my practice, especially for the root repairs because it's just made it so much easier. I think, I don't know how Mike felt about this, but a lot of times when you'd see her, you know, doing a big ACL reconstruction, you got a big meniscus tear, cartilage damage, and you look and you probe that root and you think, oh my gosh, this root's torn too. Now you're just added a huge, pretty big operation doing a root repair in addition to ACL surgery. So for me, the scorpion has just made it a lot easier. Simple passes of sutures at the root. We can prepare it very easily and, and do a retro cut socket and, and suture it and, and anchor it to the tibia very quickly. So for me, it's been a huge advantage having the knee scorpion available, especially for uh, root uh, tears. You know, I see in my practice a lot of tears, and we know that common tear that's not at the root, but three to four millimeters for the lateral meniscus close to the root. And I know Dorman showed in a study, I think it was published in 2014, that that root tear or root variant tear really adversely affects the, the contact stresses of, a, of the meniscus. So that particular tear, I used to fix kind of an all-inside technique, and I wasn't really as happy. And now I do a spanning type circumferential suture with the uh, knee scorpion, for instance, and that's been quicker and easier, and I think it's a more secure repair. So that's a real common tear I see that I think I repair better now because of the technology. That's great. So can you briefly describe your root repair technique? What I do, Chris, is a couple things. One is I always use a passport cannula because I'm going to tie an all-inside suture for my root repair. I come in, I identify the normal footprint attachment of the root, I rough it up a bit with a curette, and I use the knee scorpion, and I go ahead and very quickly pass, because it's so easy to do, I pass two O fiber wire sutures, and I create a cinch suture for both. So I have two cinches in the root. The next thing I do is I use a, a guide to drill my flip cutter pin, usually it's a 6.0 millimeter diameter flip cutter, up to the anatomic root attachment point. And I like to just retrocut about 10 millimeters just to get a little bit of a bleeding socket. I'm not trying to pull the tissue into it necessarily, but just create an environment for healing. And then very simply, I pass a fiber stick and its red sheath out through, grab it through the passport cannula, 
shuttle the two cinches through into the socket, and I just fix it on the tibia with a swivel lock anchor, which makes it quick and easy. So it's really facilitated the repair. I think that's an excellent technique. I do it very similar. Uh, I do add a leader stitch in the very end of the meniscus, which helps guide it into the socket we make with the flip cutter. Mike, understanding that the repair method is somewhat dependent on the tissue pattern and the tissue condition, has the knee scorpion allowed you to repair meniscus tissue that you'd otherwise not been able to repair? Definitely. It's a very low profile, versatile instrument, and as Pat mentioned, it's really important for these root tears. But the surgeon can choose whatever knot they like, and they can place it on the periphery of the of superior surface or on the undersurface of the meniscus. It's a very low profile knot, which is often recessed partially within the meniscus which minimizes any articular cartilage damage. So I think the scorpion can be used for radial, horizontal, vertical tears, and especially the root. I think another advantage for use of the scorpion too is we can use smaller suture. We can use a 2-0 suture or an O-suture. So again, that low profile knot the ability to do that, I think is a big advantage to minimize stress on the meniscus itself or any worry about the articular cartilage. We all know that some surgeons prefer a circumferential stitch configuration to hold together to displace tissue of the meniscus. Pat, what are your thoughts about circumferential stitch configurations? Well, first of all, Chris, in the literature, circumferential stitch has been shown to be the strongest meniscal repair suture, number one. Number two, also there's some evidence in the literature that when the meniscus is reduced after repair, where it has good contact is where it heals. So the advantage of the circumferential suture is we're going to get more contact of the repair. So theoretically improve the healing, number one. The other thing is, Sometimes in an all-inside meniscal repair, you, you may pucker the capsule a little bit or, or cause the meniscus to be a little bit extruded. And in a circumferential suture, you won't do that at all. So I think there are some tremendous advantages to doing that suture. There also may be a biological advantage because the circumferential stitch may seal off the healing environment from synovial fluid and therefore improve success. Along those lines, in order to preserve the meniscus, can we repair even those tears that have limited vascular supply? I think we have to. We used to only repair vertical tears in the red-red zone. Now we'll take on pretty much any tear if we think we have a chance of healing because as we mentioned, once you remove a meniscus, it's gone and the consequences can be dire for our young patients. And recent series have shown that there can be healing even in some of these more avascular areas. So Barber Weston and Noyes did a systematic review of meniscus repair for tears in the red-white zone and found an 83% healing rate. So I think that uh, patient age and the site of the meniscus tear don't necessarily stop me from attempting to repair a meniscus if I think I have a decent chance of getting it to heal. And we also know, as Pat mentioned, that even if we do have to reoperate, we may be resecting less meniscus than we would have at the initial surgery. And Mike, maybe you can comment, recently you presented uh, plane films of a patient who had a meniscus tear and you saw with those serial plane films as time went on, the joint space narrowing. Yes, we've looked at serial MRIs in patients, for example, with radial tears near the root attachment. And it's uh, rather discouraging to see the rapid demise of the joint. And with those serial MRIs, we can see dissolution of the articular cartilage, subchondral bone edema on the tibia and femur, and even arthritis within just a year or two. Well guys, clearly new technology has paved the way for better all-inside meniscus repair devices. Has the option to repair a meniscus with an all-inside technique changed the way that you approach meniscus repairs? Oh, absolutely. Uh, my good friend Mike and I, we're kind of the old guard, so uh, we grew up in the uh, full combat meniscal repair days of inside-out suturing and, and penetration through our gloves. And when you think about that, the inside-out techniques, you know, we had to make a safety incision posteriorly, posterolaterally, yeah, and that took time. You have to pass the needles and you're bending over at funny angles, trying to grab them, trying to find them, where they're going. Residents are pushing them out the back. I mean, it, was, it, it took a lot longer, more operative time, more cost. Um, and so I think the all inside meniscal repair devices have hugely changed the game. And because they give us strong, secure sutures, I think it's really made a big difference. And definitely to repair a meniscus in the past, sometimes you thought, well, maybe it's a, a part, fairly stable longitudinal tear, maybe I'll leave it. Nowadays, I, I don't leave it because I can you know, fix it so efficiently with an all-inside technique. I just fix anyone I see. Mike, what benefits have you found advantageous with the speed cinch? I like the speed cinch because of its ergonomic design with one-handed operation. So I can still hold the scope so I know I have good visualization and also insert the needle and insert the implants. And I think it can be used for a variety of different tears, vertical, uh, horizontal, and even uh, sometimes radial tears, it works very well for. And it has a very sharp needle tip, 
uh, which allows you to penetrate. I use these numbered laser lines because I want to try to avoid over penetration of the needle. And that really helps me accurately and safely place my sutures. I want to just piggyback a little bit on what Mike said. One of the things that I really like about the speed cinch is the diameter of that needle. It's very sharp. And for me, I've been able to get closer to the free edge of the meniscus, particularly on some white, white tears. And I, and I have less of a risk of a stress riser, I believe, because I'm, I'm having a smaller hole through the meniscus. The penetration through the meniscus is less. And the suture, again, with, is, is lower profile uh, using that smaller suture. So I think that's a, a real advantage. I think the other thing that I wanted to say about the speed cinch, it's, it's really nice that the way the device is designed, we, we're not pushing the needle well past the meniscus through the capsule to deliver the implant. You know, the, the needle is just coming to the capsule and then when you inject it, it's pushing the implant behind the capsule. So it's actually safer than if you had to push the needle well past to, to pass point to get the device to fixate behind. So I think that's a real safety advantage too for, for the speed cinch. Now that's an excellent point because we all fear, you know, neurovascular injury with all inside repair and those features will minimize that. I've also found that the smaller implants and the very strong fiber wire suture an advantage as well. Uh, some of the previous techniques I've used, I've had some patients with pain because we fill the area with these very, very large implants which can irritate the capsule and the tissue. So I think this is another advantage. Pat, do you have any tips that you use to facilitate a difficult all inside repair? Well, Chris, one of the tough repairs that I've had over the years has been the radial tear of the lateral meniscus. And we see it a lot in young athletes. And we know from the literature that if they end up with a partial lateral mastectomy for that radial tear, they're going to do it less well long term than, say, if it was a partial medial mastectomy. So I think preserving the lateral meniscus is critical, especially in an athlete. So what's helped me technologically is the onside advances we have made, especially with the knee scorpion. So what I traditionally do now is I use a knee scorpion to place an all inside spanning type circumferential suture to draw the tear together. But sometimes there's a gap. So I'll put two of those in and then just to reinforce it further, I will add some speed cinch toward the peripheral aspect to anchor to the capsule. I think that's further helped to stabilize that type of tear and made it more secure for me. I've also used it for the difficult radial tear. Sometimes we have to release the capsule a little bit to get that root back to its anatomic location. And then we use the scorpion for our, our locking suture, transosseous with the flip cutter, but also then the speed cinch to put a couple sutures through the capsule to further stabilize that repair. Mike, do you have any pearls for us that you discovered while using the speed cinch? Well, it starts with the basics, Chris. First, you have to have very accurate portal placement so you can access especially the posterior compartments. Next, I think you have to understand the tear. So you have to probe it and make a decision on what type of suture you want to use might be vertical mattress, might be horizontal mattress, or circumferential. Then I like to insert the black cannula, which is the depth stop cannula first, followed by the needle. You choose the position for your first implant, you penetrate with the needle using the laser lines in the depth stop to make sure you don't over penetrate. You then deploy the selector button number one, then you retract that. The next step is very important. You deploy button number two and you only partially squeeze the trigger so that you can go to the first click which advances some suture into the joint and that prevents later entanglement of that suture beyond the tissue. Then you choose your second location, insert the needle, and squeeze the trigger the rest of the way, the final deployment of the implant. You then retract that out of the joint you can then tension the suture using the pusher cutter with a sequential pushing and pulling maneuver, which allows you to get a very tight knot. It'll go to the implant number one location and you cut it. Now there soon will be an opportunity to use a reverse curve speed cinch, which allow you to put sutures on the under surface of the meniscus, which may have advantages, for example, for a stacked vertical mattress design, also would keep the knots on the under surface beneath the meniscus away from the articular cartilage. Any thoughts about making an accessory portal to reach the meniscus with the speed cinch? I won't hesitate to do so if I have to, Chris. Most of the time I don't, but sometimes you do. And the nice advantage of the speed cinch is, is the low profile of that black inserter depth gauge device so you can make a little small incision and get at where you need to be. And I would not hesitate to do so to get that suture positioned properly. As we close out this episode of Breakthrough, briefly describe where each of you see all inside meniscus repairs five years from now. I think there will be two major areas that will improve. I think number one, our implants will get stronger in combination with better suture material will, will be how we are. Mike? No, I agree. I think that the indications are expanding. Uh, the success rate is improving. 
and I think surgeons need to be comfortable repairing menisci. And with some of these newer techniques, they can quickly and safely repair a meniscus and make the choice to preserve the meniscus rather than remove it. Well, thank you gentlemen for joining us today. I think we all learned a lot. Thanks, Thanks Chris. for having me, Chris. Thank you once again for being part of this breakthrough event and for letting Arthrex help you treat your patients better. A team of experts will remain online to answer any additional questions you may have. Also, all the digital assets in this webcast will be available on the Arthrex.com website. If you'd like to view this webcast again, subscribe to our What's New email using the form provided after this broadcast. We encourage you to contact your local Arthrex representative to arrange a visit to one of our surgical training facilities around the world to learn more about meniscus repair. We look forward to hosting you again at the next exciting edition of Breakthrough.